Welcome to the end of 2022 and the last episode of the year for the Support Insights podcast. I'm your host, Bryony Mulcairn, and I want to take this episode to have a look back at some of the learnings we've taken from our amazing collection of guests that we've had on the last few months. As I was looking back over this year's episodes to put together this compilation, some recurring themes stuck out. The biggest one being the importance of sharing data across departments to represent the customer's voice in all different areas of your business. Our first clip is a prime example of a company who put their customers at the heart of everything that they do in every department, from social media to delivery. I'm talking, of course, about our friends at Snug from episode 35. We are a very insight-driven company. Teams want to see the feedback from customers. It shouldn't be, this is what we think. It should be actually evidence-driven. This is what customers are saying. This is the feedback we're receiving. We've got three sort of always-on surveys across the customer journey, and the data is looked at on a regular basis and fed back. We look at our NPS scores regularly and see how that trends month on month. We don't just look at quantitative feedback. We also look at qualitative feedback to really bring the customer voice to life and understand the deep reasons of why someone gave a certain rating or why do people love Snug or what are their favorite things about Snug. That then translates back more strategically to what are our key USPs? And this should really be driven by what our customers think. Some of the insights are applicable to the whole company in all departments, but I would say it can be different use cases for the brand team or the social team. It could be used for content strategy or what people want to see on social media. For the product team, it's more about what product features are people looking for or what do they love most about certain ranges. The website team, it's about the website experience. Are we lacking any specific product information that will help them purchase online? I think it's been really, really nice to work in a company where customer insights, feedback and customer service and experience is really valued. Because at the end of the day, that is what's going to drive a higher customer satisfaction and growth. What a perfect example of how customer support insights can be so valuable to different departments and areas across the business. And what Rebecca's just described is how that can actually work and benefit everyone, from your marketing department, knowing what your customers want to hear about, to even your logistics team, knowing what your customers consider to be quick and efficient delivery. Great stuff. But what can this look like in practice when working collaboratively between departments like product and support? How can you make sure that the insights you're sharing translate the customer's issues into a language that the product team care about? In this next clip, Nick Morton from Hotjar in episode 41 describes exactly that. Sometimes there's a conversation that happens that never quite sits right with me. We'll say, hey, we're seeing this customer issue. Well, how many support tickets have you got around it? That's kind of not the point. If this is a big issue, people will just bail. If it was me, I would do everything in my power not to have to raise a support ticket. I would either try and self-serve and solve the problem myself, or I would just simply go, this doesn't work. I'm going to just bail. So I think what's powerful is to go, okay, we've had this quality feedback. We have a hypothesis. This might be an issue. Is there a way we can test that hypothesis? Could we, for example, replicate the issue and put in a log so that we can see the full picture of how often this is happening? Could we maybe just move with a quick experiment to see if we can resolve it in this way? You need to find ways of transferring that qualitative feedback into something genuinely quantitative that you can measure and look at objectively. If you're in support and you've got this very subjective view of an issue, you're saying we need to sort this out. And the product team are coming from a completely different perspective. You're there as a support person getting frustrated, thinking, oh, they're not listening to me. And the product team are there getting frustrated, going, I keep banging on about this thing that doesn't matter. When you bring this shared language, if you can find a way to talk objectively and to understand each other's perspectives and start to put the objective on the subjective, you know, how many times is this actually happening? What's the actual impact? It means that you can have a much better conversation between the two teams and hopefully build a much stronger relationship. That's some great insight from Nick there on how logging issues, experimenting on hypotheses and constantly iterating can help bring a shared language between product and support to solve customer issues. Building on the topic of product and support, in my next clip, Shannon Johnson from Sprout Social in episode 44, Shannon discusses how to create a healthy, beneficial and customer centric relationship between these departments. I asked Shannon what her optimal customer-focused relationship would look like between product and support in an ideal world, and this is what she said. Well, I think this step one is just a mutual respect, right? The way that I try to approach it initially in any role that I'm in or any company that I'm in is building trust and an understanding of each other. I think trust and empathy, all of that 
it has to exist. It's the foundation for a good relationship. Beyond that, there's a lot of process and cadence that I like to implement in which we are providing feedback in a meaningful way regularly. Right now we do monthly reporting to product about customer sentiment, customer issues, quantifying all of those things that we were just talking about from a data perspective. And then the other thing is it's cross-functional partnership for me too. It's working with my peers in other departments such as sales and customer success, customer marketing, and really trying to come together about priorities because I think that helps the relationship with product as well. I think when we are working individually, we're solving the same problems, but in different ways. And if we work together, then we can have more of a partnership approach with product as well. What I'm trying to do right now actually is create like more of a committee where we identify every quarter a different problem to solve and have it be very focused. And I think that that just creates more of like that action and focus. And I think once you open it up to like, how do we do this? And you keep it really broad, then it can stay very nebulous. And there's not a lot of execution or action that comes out of it. And so it's just like, what is the most important thing to us right now? And then how are we going to understand it and work to resolving it? We're working a lot on centralizing data and reporting so that we're all speaking the same language and we all are seeing the same behaviors and can tie them to overall outcomes and needs of customers. I try to approach things with as much data-backed evidence as possible. I also know that one of the ways to influence the product roadmap or influence the minds of product and engineering leaders is to really tie those requests or those priorities that I'm pushing to cost or financial leverages. So thinking about we're spending X amount of time supporting this specific part of the product, which equates to X, Y, Z dollars over the course of a year or whatever, that really speaks the language of product and engineering. So I really focus a lot on our ability to quantify our effort and then be able to also quantify the impact that anything that goes onto the roadmap, any of those feature requests or changes on the back end would make to our overall business. Some awesome stuff there from Shannon and make sure you check out episode 44 to hear some more of her insights. So it's great knowing the best ways to speak and share data across different teams, but where do you get that good quality data to share in the first place? In polls and surveys across the customer support community, we've seen that being able to collect and report on data in a specific, effective and reliable way is one of the biggest challenges for a lot of support leaders. In this next clip, Clements Berend, AI enthusiast from episode 43, talks about how AI can be used to gather granular customer support data with no spreadsheets, pivot tables or manual tags anywhere in sight. Manual tagging always when it involves a human, they forget about it or do mistakes. That's just normal. AI, it doesn't get tired. It just does the job. So that's definitely an advantage. I think also it's way better in spotting bugs. One great example of what you can do with AI is you can just get a ticket now to your inbox and the AI automatically classifies it to certain categories. So for instance, is it, is it a complaint? Is it about a payment issue? Or what's the topic about? A lot of customer support teams are using CSET service. What AI can then do for you is actually solve this issue that you rely on a CSET service, and it just makes a sentiment analysis of all comments which you have in your inbox, and then give you like some number and some score overall. And the good thing is you can also then track your social media conversations and not only your tickets. And then you get a way more realistic picture of how your community is feeling towards your product and on what you should focus next. You obviously had a lot of really cool things happening at Bitpanda to help your customer support function, like the auto tagging, like the sentiment analysis. What impact did this have on your support center? The impact, especially on the team, was employee satisfaction went up. It's an exciting topic. People liked it. People were curious about it. It just motivated them. Regarding the reporting, the most important question in the very beginning, who is the audience of your reporting? As customer support team, you are super biased when it's coming to customer feedback. You will always remember the feedback where the customer asks in the nicest way, in the rudest way, and maybe in the most frequent way. But 
does that say anything about how important the issue is? Maybe it indicates it, but not like absolutely. So what we did is we built some dashboard with an overview of certain topics and below the sentiment, then also the volume for a certain time frame, and also for user group. So we also focus on seeing what the VIP clients are saying and what other normal retail clients are saying. Then in addition, besides the sentiment and also the volume, we also looked at churn risk. We identified that before users are stopping our service, sometimes they complain and they use specific wording. For instance, they say like the payment method is not working and so on. And then you can identify which users are very likely that they will quit your service. So this was how we deal with product management, that they can access the data on their own because then they can have their own ideas and not rely anymore on customer support. And actually it helped also the customer support age that they don't have to always run to product management and tell them what's not working. Harnessing AI for the reporting and prioritization of your customer support tickets is obviously something that we advocate for quite strongly at Centersum, given that that's what we do. When you're using AI to analyze, tag, triage, and report on your customer support conversations, it means you can rely on accurate, granular, quantified qualitative data that other teams can self-serve from, as Clement's team did with their own dashboard. But whether the guests from our recent podcasts use a tool for data collection or not, the overall undeniable theme is that the customer voice is king in whatever format you report on it. In our next clip from episode 42, Valeria Cast from Printify talks about the importance of not just sharing insights across departments, but actually inviting other teams to come into customer support and experience speaking with the customers directly. I think that we're moving more and more towards the era of listening to our customers and building products around what they want rather than doing it the other way around, which I think is more of the 20th century way, right? They build something and then they try to get people to use it, which is cool. But if you ask me, not always the best approach. If you apply snippets of that approach to building for the customer demographic that you're targeting, I feel like that is a smarter and more guaranteed successful way. And naturally, if you look at CSAT, if you look at NPS, if you look at customer effort score, if you generally collect the voice of customer in whatever shape or form, usually you should have several, not one, then you will understand. If you do customer interviews, right? If you have a researcher in your team who's consistently interacting with customers, use that to your advantage. If you don't have time to yourself, sit down and discuss something with customers so it's generally important to talk to your customer we work very closely with product and generally other external teams outside of support we have several initiatives on the support team that are highlighting the most key problematic areas and we make sure we quantify the impact so that the other teams can understand not just how what they're building is potentially a cool or not cool feature, but making sure that they understand that it's either impacting our growth or not, whether it's costing us or not. When you do it that way, it's easier to prioritize next steps in the strategy when you have a very clear understanding, not just of the sentiment in the customer, but potential also financial impact. We have something that's called Meet Your Customer Week, which is basically where everybody outside of support switches seats with the support team. And they are capable of answering and discussing and talking with customers, helping them solve their issues. Now that we have specialized teams, we also try to break down the people into those specific support teams. So that, for example, if you're a product manager who's building up things uh, around the product creation experience, they will replace you with a team that is specifically focusing on those types of cases. That way, when you're looking and seeing how customer support works, that's one thing. But more importantly, you are looking and, let's say, observing how what you are doing is impacting the customer, how they feel about it, what questions do they continuously have about it. So actually great feedback and from what I hear it's very uplifting and also insightful when you're building something very frequently you get so lost in the process that you forget who you're building for 
So that kind of reminds them that we do have people behind numbers and behind features and graphs and documents, right? There's people who are relying on it to work, relying on it to function properly. I think those are my favorite experiences when I see the whole company getting together and just talking to customers. It's really, it's really, really cool. In this session we're having now, can do anything, then I hope that it potentially drives somebody who doesn't work in support to go talk to your support team member in your company, in your team, sit down with them and see what they're doing and talk to them about what is the customer wanting? How are they feeling about our product? So if you are not doing that, then let's go do that. <laughs> Great bit of advice there from Valeria. If you're in a non-customer facing team, it's so important to take the time and go and speak to your customers, go and sit with your customer support team and hear how things are actually directly impacting your customers. Remind yourself of the human behind the product. There is one key thing that stands out for me in the world of support as someone who started in support, who's still integrated in the customer support community and talks to support leaders like these wonderful guests regularly. The undeniable trait in every support leader is that real passion for the customer, for providing excellent customer service and for their team. Moving on now from the topic of data, I want to share some of my favourite clips from the guests over the past year, highlighting their real passion for the customer and for their teams. Enjoy. I think when you start from that background like you and I have, it's kind of an obvious no-brainer that businesses should invest in support and that support is not just a cost center, it's real value. Sometimes companies make support agents feel like second-class citizens in the company. Like, support's less important, it's just a cost center. How can we have less support agents, etc.? And that's not the way I view it, and I make an effort to proactively share how important I think support agent is to celebrate them and to show the impact that they bring beyond just, yeah, I closed another ticket, but rather, look how happy this customer is Look at the positive word of mouth we're getting from these customers. Look at these referral customers that we're getting because they're so happy with our product and our team. I think if you start off in CS with a love for CS, you're going to succeed. I love the space and I love the work. I love my team. I love being there for my team. And you know, we're all people. You're going to come into work and you're going to feel 80% sometimes. We're never always going to feel 100%. And it's expected from your fellow agents to help you out on those days for you to do the same for your fellow agents when they're feeling down as well. We all have problems. We have mental health issues, family issues, health concerns as well. I have Crohn's disease, so I understand the need to have flexibility in the workplace to deal with a problem like that. If you're a department head in customer service, just take care of your people. Make their lives as easy as possible and you will never regret it. I plan to stay in here for as long as possible. I love the space, so I hope I don't move anytime soon. My number one focus in my job is my team, is my people. My goal is to focus on their success, whether it's within my team or not. I want to provide them as many opportunities as I can within my team, but at the same time, I also want to set them up for success and what they want to do next. So honestly, every time I get somebody like an internal transfer, I can coach somebody or help them move into a role that they like within the company. It's a huge moment of pride for me. I love it. I love being able to help people realize their potential, help them navigate things professionally. I think that that's something that I'm also very, very passionate about. I think for me, it's about like the building relationships part of it and like fostering a culture where people trust each other to do the right thing. And I would say as well, our team specifically is kind of built on lightheartedness and humor. We've got an amazing team. I think particularly in customer service, you're working in a field where these tickets are coming in and it's really hard. I actually really like the challenging ones. I think for me, those are the most rewarding because you're able to have conversations that certain people wouldn't be able to normally have in their day to day. And maybe no one's actually engaged them on this message and maybe they're bombarded by political messages. And then when you engage with them, you actually get a chance to speak and say, hey, actually try these things. You, you might like them. And they do. And they do like them. And then they write back to you and go, oh, well, I'm sorry. Because actually, I appreciate you taking the time because my kids love it. And you're like, hey, baby, like, by far, those are the best. Those are the winners that I really like. As a leader for the department, it's part of my job to always motivate and make sure that they're happy. Because I think as soon as they're not, or as soon as somebody's having a bit of a down day, and we all have them, it's really easy to have that shown in the way that you're communicating. So I think it's really important that when my team come into work that they're 
super happy with what they need to be doing, happy with the level of knowledge that they have to do their role. So we really promote well-being and making sure that we're all happy doing our roles. And you know what? The feedback that we've just had internally about our culture as a business has been great. One of our values, and our values are something that we truly do live by, is to put the customer at the heart of everything. The customer's experience is, is paramount. Where we're looking for improvement, we don't want to just be good at this. We want to be incredible. We want to have the best possible representation of our customer's voice. But it really helps to strive to that when you have this shared value that I genuinely believe the entire company holds close and, and truly believes in. I remember when I started the hot jar, a couple of months in, I was talking to someone else who'd started not too long before me. And I said, like, this is the first place I've ever worked where everyone gives a shit. Like everyone gives a shit, all of us. I had never worked anywhere like that before. And I've got to say, that's still the case now. And there you have it. The 2022 Support Insights podcast is all wrapped up. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode. It really warmed my heart listening back to the clips of our guests talking about how much they love their function and their people. Anyone who's worked in support always comes away with similar awesome stories. There's been so many awesome moments throughout this year's podcast and unfortunately I couldn't include them all or everyone. So please do head to the website at centisum.com to check out other episodes. Merry Christmas from myself and the team at Sentisum and I can't wait to welcome more guests onto the podcast in 2023 and chat about more fantastic topics. Happy New Year!